Like the great Vinnie Paul once said, one, two, barbecue. And today from the Teeny Tiny's line, we got the barbecue playset and a little sushi playset. And the spirit of Ultimate Warrior will run forever. <laughs> to the channel for something entirely different is today from the teeny tiny's five below line we got the grill out play set and we've got the sushi play set but for all your grill out needs i guess hit up five below as these are at five below right now and guess what they're five dollars each and these things have been going around a lot of people have been picking this one up the first time i saw these was in a gi joe facebook group and i said oh man i'm at five below every single day because you know my daughter she's got a sick a very sick habit of buying squishmallows and we're thinking about taking her to you know get some help maybe is what we'll do and it just can't have that kind of obsessive collecting going on in this family. No way, no way going to take Elle to get some help out there with her Squishmallow habit. But we were there looking at Squishmallows, and I said, I'm going to pick these up for 10 bucks. This isn't a bad day at the office. Now, this grill one, I think, is the main event here. Sushi one, a little bit here and there. And we'll talk about both of these here. And, of course, we're going to do this review like we do all the other reviews on the channel. We're going to take a look at the packaging. We're going to talk about it. We're going to unbox it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to see where it goes from there. There. And this barbecue playset couldn't come at a better time. Of course, 4th of July is here. It is time to get the grill going, hit up some burgers, all kinds of stuff, some steaks, you name it. Let's get after it with the old barbecue grill playset. And I will put some nice glamour shots throughout this video as we usually do. And maybe we'll even have a little bit of a cookout with some familiar friends from the channel as well. But let's look at this barbecue playset first. It is the mini barbecue grill, ages six and up. A very interesting one. A lot of small pieces with this one, as you can imagine. So you don't want little kids choking on it. Grill doors are open. That's what it says on the side right there. Uh, but a very cool one. Same thing on this side here. Big window box in the front. Seeing all the different stuff you get here. This could be quite the line in the future if they could really do this. And it seemed to be there was more stuff than just sushi. There was like a vending machine one. But those looked a little bit too big for action figures. But I think they got a few different things going on out there. But there's the old back of the package. All the kind of stuff you get. Breaks it all down for you. Let's see what's going on. See if anything sticks out right here for us. Includes a grill, a plate, great steak. Oh, everybody needs a steak. Propane tank is really cool because even if you don't want a grilling playset, that would be really cool for like a dreadnought or something in G.I. Joe. They could be throwing up a propane tank and shooting it in the air or something like that. Could have some of that going on. Ketchup bottle, mustard bottle, plain hot dog, hot dog bun, two burger buns, pair of tongs, burger, knife, kebabs, a grill fork, a hot dog, with mustard so you get a lot of different stuff here for great figure photography or let's say you have an arena set up for your wrestlers and you can have some food going on a little dinner plate uh your ninja turtles they could be eating on some of this even though they do prefer pizza at the end of the day i guess but there's a lot of ways you could go with something like this so i'm anxious to see what's going on seeing what all the fuss is about and let me tell you there's been some fuss guys there's been some fuss but there it goes see you later goodbye got the double plastic prison makes a lot of sense I'm hopeful that the grill, you can store everything inside the grill. I think that would be a very smart move. Uh, we'll see if that's in the cards or not. Looks like we're taped in here. They don't want these things. And one thing about this thing is, too, it's it's good it's taped in because the more protection, the better on something like this. Even though it is only $5, uh, you don't want all your stuff falling out, slipping all out, all kinds of things like that. That is for sure. So let's get this going here. Nothing else in that, so see you later. Goodbye as well. And let's break this bad boy down. I guess where does a guy even start? And here it is. You could technically store everything down. I guess we'll start with the grill first right here. Looking really nice. you got two big cabinet doors that open up full of storage room. You can put whatever you need to down in there. Very good. Of course, this is plastic. A little bit cheaper plastic. This isn't really high-end plastic, but I think this is perfect, and I think it does get the job done for what it's needing to do. Uh, you do get the grill here. You can turn it side to side, all kinds of stuff like that. You do get the silver handles on the doors. The handles on the doors really do open up, as we've seen here. Uh, we do get what's on the side here. Nothing that doesn't do anything. I guess that's kind of the hot plate off to the side. You get a little rack here. You can store stuff 
course, the top of the grill does open up like a toolbox, kind of, in a lot of ways. You can see some grates down below underneath here where the flames come up. And then you do get the actual grates that go inside right here, two black grates. You just stick those bad boys in like so. Fairly easy, fairly easy. you got to be smarter than the grates, but they're in there. They don't lock in, so if you turn it upside down, they will pop out on you. But it gets the job done once again. I'm here for that. You do get the propane tank. Like I said, this is pretty cool here. would be great to customize it as well. You could put a propane company on there. You could put a sticker on there if you wanted to. Of course, a white propane tank. It is what it is. But it definitely fits a propane grill. And I know there's a lot of diehards out there. Why is this not a charcoal grill? I hear it all the time. My dad, you guys know my dad. He's on the channel all the time. My dad is a lawn expert at uh, taking care of his lawn. He's one of those guys that has an immaculate lawn 24-7. Good for him. Well, shout out to his lawn there. One of the best in the game. One of the best in the game. But he's also a master griller, of course. And I didn't know how good I had it as a little kid. As my dad would make basically New York Strip every single night for dinner. That's what we had basically every single night. And I remember going to college for the first time. Yeah, the first time. Well, when I went to college, I should say. I remember saying, eh, I'll get some of that New York Strip. And then I saw the price point. And I said, no, I am not getting New York Strip. I couldn't believe how expensive that was. Of course, I did work full time at a grocery store in college. And I was very lucky that they had a, you know, a big food department over there for fresh food. College students, I only had to pay two fifty dollars a meal. So unfortunately or fortunately for me, I ate at the grocery store for lunch and dinner almost every single day of my college career. To this day, I try not to eat at that grocery store anymore because I had it so many times over the years but anyways that's a long story that's a story for another day some might say uh, but my dad a master cooker he loves a good ribeye a good steak I'm no different there. It's weird, though. I've always been a chicken breast guy. I've always loved a chicken breast on the grill. I've always steered more towards chicken than steak. I'm not against a good steak, but, of course, steak, very expensive. Chicken, a little bit cheaper. I don't know. Maybe that's it, but uh, I always try to get that chicken protein instead of the steak protein, especially in my heavy workout days back in the day. Once again, there you go. Uh, but the more you know, folks, the more you know. But let's dive into some of this stuff here. We do get a ketchup bottle would be great if it had said Heinz or something on it, but you know that's not going to happen. They're not going to pay those royalties. Same thing. Can we get a little French's mustard or something like that? Not a mustard guy, though. I like a honey mustard. I don't like straight up mustard that much. Just not for me. Ketchup, I can eat ketchup as well, but I actually prefer barbecue sauce on my burgers over ketchup, but I'll take ketchup if I have to, but barbecue is my, uh, my uh, claim to fame. That's what I do prefer, but definitely good here. Those are great to use, I'm sure, in the future. We got some kebabs right here. We got a chicken kebab and we got a steak kebab. So choose your own kebab adventure at the end of the day. I remember being a little kid eating a steak kebab and throwing those vegetables right away. Just give me the steak. I don't need those vegetables. Nowadays, though, I'll eat the vegetables. I'm, I'm okay with a vegetable now and, now and again here. Now we get a plate here, a nice serving plate, all in white, matches the propane tank. That makes sense. That's a needed, needed thing right there. And then we do get some utensils here. We got the big old tongs looking good. Got some tongs ready to go. And then we do get some uh, forks. So you can fork the meat, you know, pull it out, all that kind of stuff, put it on the plate. You got all that going on. I'm gonna put that right on the side. Now we get down to the meats. Oh, we're like Arby's here. We got all the meats going on. We get two hamburger buns right here. Hopefully these are ballpark or brownberry hamburger buns. If you're buying anything else out there, man, you bought wrong. That's the end of the day. Ballpark buns, brownberry buns. Arnold, if you're out there on the East Coast, I guess we'll, we'll accept Arnold. Uh, but that's the way to go there as far as uh, buns go. Now, this is interesting here. Now, I thought this was one hamburger with pepperoni and cheese on it, but it looks like kind of like a fixin's plate for hamburgers. It's kind of what this looks like here, but very interesting. It looks like cheese. Maybe it is a hamburger. Maybe maybe that's pepperonis on there. I'm not exactly sure, but it does fit on the bun, so we do got that going for it. Maybe it's ketchup. I'm not sure, but we do get a hamburger here. This might be a little bit big for our uh, figures. We'll have to see what's going on with that in some of the glamour shots, like I said. And then we do get a big old ribeye steak. Oh, is this a T-bone? This could be a T-bone steak at the end of the day it's a steak though there's no doubt about that put that off the side and then we do get finish it off with two hot dogs oh everybody loves a hot dog not me when i was a little kid i used to like hot dogs don't like a hot dog anymore i just i'm anti-hot dog i don't know what it is i've grown up i've grown out of the hot dog taste my kids of course love a hot dog me not so much give me a brat i'll take a brat on the grill but hot dogs nah not for me anymore 
And it's weird as your taste change. When I was a kid, too, I was a huge fan of pork. I loved pork chops. I love shredded pork. When I go to a barbecue restaurant, I get a pork shredded pork sandwich. Nowadays, I'll eat it if I have to, but that's not my first choice anymore. I'm going straight for the Texas brisket or the burnt ends. If you've never had burnt ends, man, what are you doing with your life? Check out some burnt ends. That's the way to go there. But we like back to the hot dogs here. We get two hot dogs. We get one hot dog with mustard on it. We get one hot dog regular. And then we do, of course, get one hot dog bun right here. Is it a foot long? Not exactly sure on that one there, but it is very cool. I am here for that. And let's get to Master Griller Sensation as well. This is the Master Griller figure, I believe. Looks familiar. I don't know who, but beautiful motorhead shoes, beautiful or beautiful motorhead shirt, beautiful red shoes on this one. Uh, but definitely looks good. But man, oh man, I think that's okay. It might need to be a little bigger, just a hair bigger, but not bad. You could even put this on a block or something to get it off the ground, maybe just a hair more. But I'm not against that at all. I think that fits all right. How about a kebab? Can we fit a kebab in the hand here? Oh, yeah, we can, I think. Yeah, there we go. We can fit a little kebab in the hand. Oh, yes. Give me the kebab. Give me the whole thing right there. I'm here for that. Uh-oh, now I can't get the kebab out of the hand. It's here forever. It's here forever, apparently. And I'll have to work on that later, I guess. But definitely interesting. Ketchup bottle? I mean, you could pretend this is one you got at Costco or something like that. It's a big Costco ketchup bottle. But I don't think that's a terrible uh, size difference. I think this is close enough to be dangerous. I think this works here. I'm okay with this. So not a bad pickup. I could recommend this for $5. I don't think that's a bad pickup at all. That's just pocket change. It's the price of a Starbucks coffee or something. Uh, I don't know. I don't drink coffee either, but definitely cool. Definitely something for great for figure photographers. If you're a hardcore figure photographer, no doubt about it, you're going to need this in your collection. Sushi kit, on the other hand, I'm not so sure. I guess we'll find out here. You got the sushi shop going on, 20 pieces, mini sushi set, looking good on the side right there, on the side right there, and then on the back, there it is. And sushi is very interesting. There's a lot of you guys and gals out there that live in the die by the sushi. Sushi's weird. Me, being a guy from the Midwest, I mean, it's all steak, pork, chicken, things like that. It's all about those meats. That's how you grew up, you know, the country. You go to your grandparents out in the country. That's what it is. It's farming country, things like that. Not so much anymore. It's more city life in this area. Uh, but it's very interesting. When I was a kid, there was no Chinese restaurants. There was no sushi restaurants. And until the grocery store I worked at back in 1995 got a Chinese restaurant inside of it. Now they have them in on pretty much every single one of the grocery stores. Uh, that was the first time I ever had Chinese. And I remember starting off like, I don't know what any of this is. I'm going to start with this beef and broccoli. That's where I began. Then I went through the whole menu, tried them all out. I'm here for all of them. Shout out to lemon chicken. Shout out to orange chicken, sesame chicken, beef and broccoli, general sows, cashew chicken, all the hits, all the hits being played at the Chinese restaurants. But I'm here for that. I usually like the spicier type stuff. But then sushi never really came on board until I was probably late in high school. I mean, there was sushi places, but nobody really went there. It was kind of off the beaten path. It was not as well known as it is now. Now there's sushi places everywhere, of course. And say what you want about Midwest sushi. I don't know. Are you getting catfish out of the river? I don't know what you're doing exactly. I guess you're flying it in. There's places that fly it in every single day. You guys get the gist. But long way to get there. Long story short, sushi is very foreign to me. I'm not against it. I've had a couple of things that I thought were okay. But what I really need is... I need somebody to grab me by the hand, take me and sit me down at a sushi restaurant and say, okay, Kyle, we're going to go through a flight of sushi. We're going to try everything and we're going to find out what you really like. That's what I need to do. I need to try that eventually. I don't know, but they do have some of them that have like kind of like a, I don't know, like a mayonnaise like base. I'm not a big mayonnaise guy. I don't really like a lot of that stuff on my uh, sushi. Uh, I don't mind some soy sauce or some hot sauce or or, uh, you know, some, uh, I don't know, some spicy teriyaki sauce, things like that. But I'm not a big fan of the thick mayonnaise-like sauces in mine, so I wouldn't like some of that. But the more you know about my sushi life, the better, I'm sure, I'm sure. But on the back there, you get the breakdown, just like we saw with the grill. Let's run through the breakdown real quick. What's going on here? You do get one pot. You do get one open steamer. You do get one closed steamer. Two sushi platters, one bowl of noodles, ramen noodles. Now, my kids, they love a ramen noodle. They make that stuff all the time. One soy sauce. My daughter, Elle, she will drink soy sauce right out of the the, um, the cup or the, the squirter thing or whatever you call that thing. She's, she's all in. She's all in on that. 
We got one sriracha sauce. I am not a sriracha guy either. I like hot sauce. I like stuff. Sriracha just doesn't do it for me. And I hear there's a sriracha shortage going on. Watch out for that. But not a sriracha guy. I like that new stuff that's out there. It's like a bok chan or something like that. There's like different flavors. That's the one to get. If That's my recommendation once again. One bowl of edamame. One, one side of wasabi. Got to be careful with this wasabi. You got to be really careful with the wasabi. I had a guy at work one time. They had a thing of wasabi there. And he thought it was uh, guacamole. And he took a big spoon of it and put it in his mouth. Never idea. No, no clue what this was. This was an older guy too. And I thought he was about going to die right there in the break room. It was quite the scene. I watched it, put my food up on the table and just stared as I watched him suffer for a good hour. Uh, it was a long break. It was a long break. There you go. Uh, but let's see. One dumpling pile. One to-go container. Always got to have that there. One shrimp planter, platter. Sign me up all day long. One empty plate, pair of chopsticks, one bubble tea. Bubble tea is the biggest scam ever. What is that stuff? My daughter, Elle, she's like, we went to Costco one day. It was like a $30 box of bubble tea. I'm like, I'm not spending 30 bucks on this bubble tea. And she said, oh, I need it. This is the greatest stuff ever. I'm like, fine. I'm, I'm such a pushover. I'm a pushover. You can imagine. She gets home. She makes one. Oh, I don't like this stuff. Uh, just throw it away. I'm like, you're going to drink every single one of those. But my wife and her, they go get bubble teas at places and I don't know. It's over my head. Uh, you do get three sushi plates and one conveyor belt. A conveyor belt. What are we doing here? This is some high-end sushi going on with this thing. There it goes. See you later. Put some spin on it. Goodbye. Oh, sushi. Sushi. There it is. Let's see what's going on here in the sushi department. Not sure exactly what I'm even going to do with this sushi. I was thinking maybe put it with the Ninja Turtles. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. We'll, we'll find out, I guess. But there it is. Plastic prison. See you later. Goodbye. All right, let's get down to business. We got the pot. Uh, and the nice thing about this pot is you can store things in this pot. So you can put some of the accessories in there. Uh, a nice pot. Almost looks like a crock pot. Uh, it really does look like a crock pot. So I guess you could reenact some famous chili scenes. Wasn't there Roblox with uh, some chili in the G.I. Joe? Or you go to the office and get Kevin in his famous chili. You get that going as well. But it does look like a big crock pot here. So I'm for that. This must be the conveyor belt. Would you say this? I, I think this is the conveyor belt. You got little plates going on. So you can put the sushi on there. Uh, I guess some of the fancier sushi places you must sit down and it must just kind of go around. You grab what you need. I don't know. I don't know. You guys tell me. You guys tell me. Then we get some sushi here. We got some shrimp. Uh, this must be the wasabi maybe. So we got some of that going on. Uh, I don't know what these are. Just straight up sushi there. And then we get... Uh, are these the... Were they say there was dumplings in there? I think that's what this is. Some dumplings action. We get the takeout container. I'm here for that. You could have, you know, Deadpool sitting on the couch. He could have his chopsticks going on. He could be eating these. You could do something like that with your figure photography, of course. Got another sushi platter right there. You get a little six sushi looking good. And what's this one? Another one, just another sushi platter there. So we get that. And we get one of these pots. I think they said it was like a steamer pot or something like that. Maybe the dumplings are in here. Who knows? You do get one of those. And then we get some uh, more sushi. Boy, a lot of sushi. Well, it makes sense. It's a sushi set. But you do get a high pile of sushi right there. You get some fresh fish uh, sushi there. Maybe some tuna. Some tuna right there. A tuna fish. Tuna piano. Tuna fish. Who knows? You get another plain Jane plate right there. Oh, here's the old sriracha sauce and... Uh, soy sauce. Now, I like these because you look at these two bottles here, very, very small compared to the ketchup. This is almost how I wish the ketchup was, but I guess you tell yourself this is the Costco one. Who knows? But we get the uh, sriracha and the soy sauce there. We get the noodles we talked about, the edamame. Oh, the edamame looking good right there. Instant noodles here for that. And then we do get the uh, pot, the dumplings pot once again. So we get another one of those. What is this one? Oh, this must be the bubble tea. All oh, the bubble tea. There it is all day long. Get us that bubble tea. And then we got two chopsticks here. Uh, very, very small, tiny chopsticks. Easily lost. Almost look like drumsticks, honestly. Looks like you're going to do some uh, drumming like a young Ringo Starr. Bam, there it goes. Who knows? But definitely interesting here. And these chopsticks, I mean, these are perfect size, these chopsticks here. Uh, even all this. I think 
I do feel like the Sushi's is a little bit better size for our standard action figures, but I think both can definitely work at the end of the day. Uh, both are really up to your imagination. Use your own imagination adventure. Figure out which way you want to go with these things. Uh, but the sky is the limit. Great for figure photographers, no doubt about it. You set up a sushi scene, set up a backyard barbecue. Man, you can do whatever you want, of course, for the 4th of July, which we're right there. We're right there in the old 4th of July right now. So perfect unboxing time frame for these going on. But there it is, a little five below food sets, I guess, from the Teeny Tiny's line. Let me know your thoughts on these two. Any great ideas you got for these? Have you picked these up? Did you know they existed? Are you headed to five below to spend your hard-earned five dollars to pick up one or both of these sets? Let me know in the comments down below. Of course, hopefully you like this video. Hopefully you subscribe to the channel. Turn on the old notification bells. We got videos every single day. Don't forget about the Patreon where you get even more videos every single day and you get early access to videos like this. Bonus content, exclusive content, giveaways, pizza reviews, you name it, all over there on the old Patreon. Of course, Patreon, your best way to support the channel. You can also support the channel at Search Kyle Peterson. And don't forget social media. Sir Paul 64 on Twitter, Instagram, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson. So for a little sushi and grill out play sets, I am Kyle. See you guys all real soon.